Let me guess it. Once upon a time, you found a nice bio persona template, named it Sass Sally and added a photo, kept up with the hobby and two children and call it a day. And now your Sally gathers the dust on the most remote digital shelf. Why does it happen? Hi, I'm Ilya, the founder of Alican, a product design agency for Sass. In this video, we'll talk about bio personas, why they fail and how you can save your Sass Sally from oblivion. Why do we need to talk about buyer personas at all? Because obsessing over customer experience is the only possible competitive advantage. These are not my words. This is what Jeff Bezos said. One problem is that customers are not there at every product team meeting. So it's easy to forget about their needs. That's why important Amazon meetings have the one empty chair that represents the customer and serves as a constant internal reminder for the team's focus. You can use the chair trick, but it has some limitations. To build a successful product, you should not only remember about your audience, but also understand their needs. You cannot understand the needs of the audience in the chair. It's a generic term for thousands and millions of potential buyers. It also seems impossible to understand all individuals hiding under the audience term. It's just more than human brains can process. And here buyer persona comes to a rescue. So what is buyer persona? To move closer to understanding our potential customers, we need a tool sit somewhere in between audience that is too generalized to explain anything and 1,200,000 and four buyers that is too detailed to explain anything. That's where segmentation of the target audience comes in. It creates clusters of your target users who exhibit similar attitudes, goals, and behaviors relating to your product. As a result, you have a manageable number of audience subgroups. SaaS buyer personas are the next step to the audience segmentation. Made out of a complex user data, they take a form of real people to highlight specific details and important features of the group. It helps product teams to create empathy with users. Well, at at least it's how it's supposed to be. Because now we have to move to the more important question. What's wrong with personas? You create your SaaS Sally and she doesn't work. You Google more info about personas to find out what went wrong. You read a buyer persona guide that makes fun of your pathetic SaaS Sally and say you need to go deeper and feed your personas with more insights and data. All right, but it doesn't actually help. Trying to remember and consider numerous features, numbers, and details of multiple personas only complicates the decision-making process. Doesn't sound familiar please share this in the comment if so. And now let's move to the next important bit. How to make personas work? The first thing you need to know is there is no one-size-fits-all personas, only situational ones. Before you make buyer personas, ask yourself, what are my personas for? Keeping this in mind, how do you build buyer personas for better marketing? Let's not get too theoretical and take a closer look at the specific example. Beamer is a SaaS marketing tool that helps you to send targeted notifications. They must be good at targeting. So how do they work? The company pitches itself for three groups of customers. Those who need their services for SaaS, e-commerce, or a website. And this division works in practice just as much. As you sign up, Beamer asks you to specify a role in the enterprise and starts talking to you accordingly on the very next page. To make itself more convincing, Beamer needs to pick its strongest selling points and put those in front and center. What information does the company need to gather for building customer personas? Website managers want to grab newcomers' attention. SaaS owners need in-app messages to increase user engagement and retention, when e-commerce guys want to announce special deals and discounts. Thus, Beamer can roughly divide their buyers into three groups according to their needs and build marketing messages that include what is most important for each persona. But when it comes to pricing, we can note that Beamer slices the audience pie in a completely different way. Here they divide users not by a company type, but by a company size, startup, pro, and enterprise. Why so? We move to the next important issue, how to make buyer personas for product pricing. When you work on pricing, personas will help you figure out what features of a product different groups of people would find most valuable and least valuable, and what they would be ready to pay for them. Thus, you'll be able to build a pricing grid that contains a satisfying option for each group of users. If defining your specific value proposition is something that you struggle with, check out my video about it before you move on and create and buy personas. Keep in mind that SaaS and e-commerce startups have more in common with each other when it comes to buying software than e-commerce startup and Amazon. That's why marketing and pricing personas can be segmented differently. Let's summarize what we learned today. How do we go about crafting useful buyer personas? As we remember, there is no one-size-fits-all personas, only situational ones. When creating user personas, tailor them to a specific task, whether you need to wrap your value proposition in the right way, make a pricing grid, or app redesign. Think of the information you need to gather about the audience to complete the task. There is a ton of data you can get, so it's vital to figure out what really matters. If you need a 
broad bird's eye view for high level understanding and decision making. Make broad personas, but remember that you cannot see the small details flying high. If the task requires any specific insight, you need to get closer. Thus, you narrow the view to be able to focus on important details. With a narrow scope, there is less context to consider, so we can get the richer data. As you know what your customers love, whether they are gains and pains, the precise design will help you to build a deep empathy with your users into a product you are making for them. I hope this video was useful. If you want to see more content like this, please comment, like and subscribe and hit the bell button so YouTube notifies you when the next video comes out.